When you build web applications, a common scenario is to display a list of items. For example, a list of names, a list of products, a list of courses, and so on. So what we want is to repeat some HTML for each item in the list. In view, we can achieve that using the v4 directive. In this video, let's learn how to use the v4 directive with arrays and objects. We have a couple of scenarios to look at. We will see how to display an array of simple strings, an array of objects, an array of arrays, a scenario where each list item is a block of HTML elements, and finally, how to work with object key value pairs. As you can see, there are plenty of examples to look at. Let's begin with a simple array of strings. Back in VS Code, in the script block, I'm going to create a new data property called names, which is an array of three strings. Bruce, Clark, and Diana. Our aim is to display this list of names in the UI, for which we need to use the v4 directive. Let's understand the syntax. In the template, I'm going to add an h2 tag and on the h2 tag, we add the v4 directive. v4 name in names. And the inner text is within double curly braces, name. This is the special syntax that the v4 directive requires. Here, Names is the names array in our data object and name is simply an alias to refer to the current item in the loop. Since we have three names, the v4 directive basically iterates three times with name referring to each of the three names. That name is what we bind to the template using the mustache syntax. So first iteration, name is equal to the string Bruce. Second iteration, name is equal to Clark, and third iteration, name is equal to Diana. Now at the moment, the linter throws an error that elements in iteration are expected to have vbind directive on the key attribute. Now we will get to what the key attribute is in the next video, but for now, we need to ensure that the element with the v4 directive needs to have an attribute binding on the key attribute. The value to the key attribute can be anything unique. In this example, we know that the name is unique in each iteration. So we can bind name to the key attribute. You can see that the linter doesn't add the red squiggly line anymore. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, we see the three names being displayed. If you inspect the element, you can see that the h2 tag is repeated three times and the inner text is Bruce, Clark and Diana. So the h2 element has repeated itself for each name in the names array. Sometimes you might also want to get hold of the index when rendering a list. For that, view provides the index in the v4 directive which you can use if required. So instead of just name, we get hold of name comma index in parentheses. Then while binding, we can also bind the index. So double curly braces, index. If we now take a look at the browser, we can see 0, 1, 2 next to the names. Index starts at 0 and hence the numbers are 0, 1, 2 instead of one, two, and three. Now this is pretty much how you iterate over an array of strings. A small variation of this is iterating over an array of objects. Let's take a look at an example. Back in VS Code, I'm going to create a new data property called full names. This is going to be an array of objects. To save us some time, I'm going to copy paste three objects. 
The first object has first name Bruce, last name Wayne. The second object has Clark Kent. And the third object has Princess Diana. Now, the aim is to display the list of full names in the UI. If you've understood the first example, this should be fairly straightforward to implement. In the template, we begin with an h2 tag. On the h2 tag, we add the v4 directive. We assign name in full names. So this time, full names is our array to loop over. When binding the name though, we access the individual properties. So name dot first and name dot last. In each iteration, name refers to the object in the array. Each object has first and last as properties which we are binding to the template. Of course, we also need to ensure we bind a unique key attribute. Let's bind name dot first. As we know, that is unique in our list of names. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, we don't quite see the full names. So let's go back to VS Code. And you can see that I have misspelled the full names property. If I save this and go back to the browser, we can see Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent and Princess Diana. So that is the v4 directive with an array of objects to display a list of elements in the UI. For our next example, let's take a look at an array of arrays. Again, to save us some time, I'm going to copy paste a data property called actors. As you can see, the actors property is an array. Each item in the array is an object. Each object contains an actor's name and a list of their movies. We have Christian Bale in Batman and The Prestige and we have DiCaprio in Titanic and Inception. Movies, as you can see, is an array as well. So we have an array of arrays. Our aim now is to display the list of actors and the list of movies they have enacted in. Let's see how. In the template, we are going to begin with a div tag. We need to loop over the actors array for which we need the v4 directive. So on the div tag, v4 and then on the right hand side, actor in actors. We also need a unique key. So let's bind actor.name to the key attribute. Now within the div tag, let us first display the actor's name. So h2 tag actor.name. Now we need to display the list of movies for this actor, which means we need another v4 directive. Let's add an h3 tag this time. And on the h3 tag, we add the v4 directive. On the right hand side, we specify movie in actor.movies. What we are telling view is that in the current iteration, each actor has a property called movies, which is an array. Use that as the source for this inner loop. We also specify the same movie as the key attribute. And then in between the tags, use the mustache syntax to bind the movie. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see that we have the output as expected. Christian Bale in Batman and The Prestige and DiCaprio in Titanic and Inception. So this is an example of an array within an array with the v4 directive. That pretty much covers the different array scenarios. Next, let's take a look at the usage of v4 directive to iterate through the properties of an object. In the data object, I'm going to add another property called myInfo. This is going to be equal to an object. Let's add three properties. Name, Vishwas, Channel, 
code evolution course view three. Now in the template, we can use the v4 directive to iterate through the properties. So in the template, h2 tag and add the v4 directive. The right hand side is going to be value in my info. My info is the object we have just defined. Also bind a unique value to the key attribute. This is again going to be value. The inner text is also going to be value. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see Vishwas code evolution and view three being displayed. The values corresponding to the properties in the my info object. Now, if you want to display not just the value, but also the key as well as the index, view does support that. So back in VS code, the right hand side of the v4 directive is now going to be within parentheses value comma key comma index and in this specific order now we can bind the same to the inner text index key and then value take a look at the browser and we can now see the index the key as well as the value for all the three properties in the my info object. So array and objects, both are supported with the v4 directive. One last point I have to mention here is that the v4 directive also works with the template tag. Let me quickly show you an example. Suppose we need to display the same list of names, but we need a separator between the names. For that, in the template, I can add a template tag and the v4 directive is going to be equal to name in names, add the key attribute binding, which is again going to be name. And then between the template tags, render name within an h2 tag. And after this, I'm going to add an hr tag as a separator. If you now save the file and go back to the browser, after the name, we have a horizontal line. If we inspect the element though, we don't have a tag in the DOM corresponding to the template tag. So to render a block of multiple elements in the UI, we can make use of the template tag with the v4 directive. All right, with that, you should now have a good understanding of the v4 directive and its usage to render a list of elements in view. But there is still a missing piece, which is the key attribute binding when rendering a list of elements. Let's understand more about this in the next video.